663. 663. That's the days since we celebrated. All the way across the grove, it was New Year's. In 663 was also the day since COVID-19 was identified as a cluster in Wuhan. It's a great way to start your sermon in tears. But it's not just 663. Because 650 is the day since the first COVID case of COVID-19 was identified outside of China, in Thailand. 638 is the day since the first COVID-19 positive case was identified in Singapore. 590. It's the day since the first social distancing measures were in place in Singapore. 585, the day since you had to get approval to enter or to leave Singapore. 565, the day since the first circuit breaker was announced in Singapore. And it's quite crazy to think of these numbers. Like, that is a lot of sleeps. We do this countdown quite often when you have little kids. How many days until my birthday? How many days until Christmas? And usually it's with joy. Yet to know that we have walked this journey for so many days is quite crazy and quite shocking. The interesting thing was, when we went into Circuit Breaker, there was this sense of worry, fear, disappointment, loss, but there was also this sense of togetherness, because right across the globe, there was unity. People were singing on their, from their balconies, some not so great, some beautifully. There was news reports of amazing musicians serenading their neighbourhood. I remember going outside in, in our place in Park Olympia when we realised that we lived in a very small apartment that hadn't occurred to us until the red tape came out. And clapping. We were trying to get the clapping right and then some people would start clapping and some people wouldn't, but all of it, and amongst that circuit breaker, there was this sense of, we've got this, Wherever we are, we're one and we're all in this together. And yes, there's physical distancing. Yes, we're required to step back, to minimise ourselves, to make space for other people to be safe. And so we did that. We stepped back and we did what was required because it was a necessity. And then, 508 days ago, it's been 508 days since the circuit breaker ended and the lesser restrictions were implemented. And when I say lesser restrictions, in case you're watching this from somebody who's not in Singapore, that means a variation of a lot of restrictions. <laughs> like, yay, we've got five people, yay, we've got eight. Yay, we can walk freely. But those lesser restrictions, for some of us, not much changed. Because the ex extremity, the challenge of experiencing something that none of us were prepared for, not our parents, not our aunties, not our uncles, nobody we knew had had an experience like that, meant that for some people, 
This tape that bound them initially became actually a safety space. So I'm allowed to go out now in a way that might be safe for me, <coughs> but maybe I won't. I'm allowed to move beyond what has limited me, but not just yet. And for some people, some people in this room, some people online, I can tell you now without a shadow of a doubt that for these last 508 days, restrictions have been beyond the restrictions that have been imposed on them, imposed on us. And sometimes it's the physicality. Oh, I won't see people because what if? Or I won't do this because what could happen? And what's happened over time is we've been minimized, <laughs> either by choice or by fear or by loss or by disappointment or by expect expectations not met. And interestingly, what bound us initially has now become that safety tape, almost a little space to cocoon ourselves. Now I say that because when I'm talking to you, you might think, well, physical limitation doesn't apply to me. What about emotional limitation? What about the way that you were with others in your life that you're not quite now? The people that you reached out to the conversations that you had that you don't quite have, the empathy and care and consideration and openness that you had to people, now you don't quite do. And then if this was a hand up thing, which I'm not going to try because it never works because people aren't honest, <laughs> but if it was, <laughs> if it's not physical limitations and if it's not emotional limitations, then maybe it's spiritual limitations. Because it's easy to walk this faith walk when we're high-fiving Jesus and we're seeing the f answers to our prayers and we're living the dream and we're walking the talk. But when we're in the midst of challenge, like a challenge we've not experienced before, it's a little bit harder. And probably in truth, for those of us who have experienced trauma, who have experienced tragedy, there's a little bit more resilience because you know that you can come out the other side. But for some of us who haven't had that, this is shocking. All of these days. So the question is then, if we've had 663 days since we, we excitedly celebrated 2020. Woohoo! So many slogans. We were like, this is just a minefield of greatness for the church. We can do anything we want in these next, these next 10 years. This is just like billboard, <laughs> literally heaven. And yet it's become something that was a sense of hope to being a sense of loss. But the... The point I want to make is now we stand here, 663 days after we begin, 605 days, is it? Better check my data, there's a lot, no, 508 days is what I'm trying to say. Since we were allowed some freedom, actually not feeling very free. And we're not finished. We're not finished with COVID, we're not finished with the challenges that come, we're not finished with journeying this and we don't know when we will be. So there are some things that we need to do in order to ensure that when you're looking at these dates again, it's not 1,258 days since I used to be my best self. 2,952 days since I was the person I really wanted to be. 3,000 days since I walked in the purpose that I know God called me to walk in in the beginning of time. And if we look at... If 
we look at Matthew, it's a funny thing, this Bible. It's full of great information. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. For some of us, that has felt too tricky. Because just as we've been limited physically and just as we've been not engaged with other people, for some of us, we actually haven't been going to God either. Yes, it's obvious we're weary. Yes, completely burdened. But also a little bit hiding. Because it's challenging on our walk when things don't work out the way that we want. Yet if we look in here, it's a whole journey of things not working out quite the way they expected and what comes as we seek God. Now for me, my journey has been this, physically absolutely limited. Emotionally, what I love about people is being all in a room with them together. If we could literally stand up now, run into the middle and hug all of us in like a group hug, that would be my thing. I'm a hugger and I haven't been able to hug all the people I wanted to. I love to see you all connecting with each other. That's one of the things that brings me joy. It's not just about me connecting with you. It's meeting somebody, and it has been since the church began, when if anyone who was at Tai Seng, we would wait at the top. It was an amazing moment in time for this church because everybody that joined the church didn't know each other. The first 50 people didn't know each other. They joined because they saw the ad, they saw something, they came along, and we would wait with anticipation as the elevator doors opened and the next people would come out, amused to see who they were. And part of what makes me me, part of why I do this and have done this for 10 years, is because God would give me like a little inkling. This person will be great with this one. This one will help them on their walk. That will be a fantastic connection for them. And so for me, the loss is that I don't get to do that. I don't get to be a part of a whole group of you, introducing you to someone who might be your best friend forever, but you just don't know them yet, and you might be too shy to talk to them. And when I think of loss for me, it's funny because I know about trauma and I know about tragedy and I've had a life and a journey and, and many experiences that make me understand that you do come out the end. So I'm good with the end. I'm okay with the end. But part of me on the journey, I have to say, is that my walk has become a little bit compartmentalized because each time I look at the news, each time I hear a story of somebody in pain and I don't have the answer, sometimes I think, heck, what do I do now? And so part of sharing the sermon with you and, and what God was putting on my heart has been my own journey, has been me literally, this is why we have tape today, literally peeling back the tape myself to say, okay, this can be no longer. It can be no longer that I am less than who I've call, I'm called to be. It can be no longer that you are less than who you are called to be. Now, there may be people in here who go, there is nothing on that list that relates to me. I am rocking it. Physically, all good, out there with all my peeps. Emotionally, I'm feeling amazing. Spiritually, I'm on fire. And if that's happening for you, then great, because I have a job for you. <laughs> and that job that I have for you is actually the same job that I have for each of us. Because I can guarantee that if this has been my journey, and part of my whole focus in life, part of what we've done for the last 10 years is to invest ourselves into what God's calling us to do. So that's, that's a pretty great anchor that holds you in because this is something we're called to do. I feel it, I know it, I'm doing it, no matter what the circumstances. But if I'm feeling this way, then I guarantee you that there are a zillion other people out there who actually need us to reach out to them. 
because part of the reaching out is actually helping us to break free. There's isolation like there never has been before. And the trick from the first circuit breaker to now is that before there was togetherness, because we were all in it together because everything was the same, and now there is division. There is division. Like last year we thought, ah, this is going to be amazing. There will be such unity that comes from this journey. So as much as this is terrible and ugly and uh, painful, yet now there is division over what should we do to get out of it? Families having a different perspective from other family members. Friends who have journeyed together for years and years now not on the same page about where we will go next. And it's emotional and it's challenging. We have countries now who are completely free and here we are in groups of two. And if we if we have a feed of any form, if we talk to people, that's also challenging because it's unsettling. Right now we have the opportunity, some of us, to leave the country and to go and see people that matter to us and some of us don't. Some of us don't have that opportunity to be with the people that matter to us. So then what is the thing that we're required to do? And I say required not just because it's a nice thought, a nice idea, but actually it's the only way for us to be the human that we're meant to be, to live this life in a worthwhile way. So what we're required to do is to actually recognise what we're going through, actually recognise if it's tough, and be honest enough to break through those boundaries, to actually break those ones down. If we look at the next slide, some of us, we've put this up already. This area is closed until further notice. Don't come near me, don't bother me. I'm good in my own little bubble. So I say if that's you, I want to challenge you to find a way to let somebody in. And if you're somebody who has a friend that you know that's them, I want you to find a way. Not walking with a lethargic attitude, not like, oh, maybe now, maybe tomorrow, but actually with a sense of urgency because the human situation right now is the perfect time for us to do everything we've always said that we were, to be the church, to be the church with energy, with passion, and with fervor and zeal, which is we are here for you and we will do what we need to do to help you. And if I see a need, I will be there and make a difference to the need. And maybe it's the need that's organised by an NGO and already set up, or maybe it's that person on Facebook who posts something that's not okay. It's not okay for them. It's not okay to continue for them. And you need to find a way to help them to be okay. If we look at... And I've spent a lot of time just reading back and forward and back and forward through the Bible, looking at it, actually, who are we meant to be? What are we meant to do? And something that amused me, because I was a little bit not a Christian at this time, as in I hadn't been a Christian, because I became a Christian in this Bible, it tells me that it is July 1999. That's also like one of those times of dates. But if we flick forward, we'll see that there was this great movement that happened in the 90s. I missed out on it. And what would Jesus do? Now, interestingly, I thought, what was the thing about this whole, what would Jesus do? Braces. What would Jesus do? T-shirts. What would Jesus do? Apparently, it was coffee cups, diapers, like the whole shebang. But the history of this, what would Jesus do journey was actually dated back to a novel that was written in the 1900s. And it was written by... Uh, a, basically 
a social reformist minister. And he wrote this book on what if we lived our life actually considering what did Jesus do and what did he ask us to do? How far wrong could we go? And his challenge then was could we actually, if we just did that for a whole entire, time, whole entire section of time, what could change in our lives that didn't exist? And then this became a movement, the whole, you can tell that it was printed in a not kind of trendy time, now it would be made out of rubber and all sorts of funkiness. But at the time, there was a youth group leader who was reading this novel, written a, a chunk of time before, and said to the youth group, look, I challenge you, let's get these bracelets made, let's do this, let's consider what would Jesus do? Like, in your situation, not just, because some people would use that as, as, as a judgment, are you doing what Jesus would do? It wasn't for other people, it was for them. What would Jesus do if I'm in this moment, if I'm in a, a time of challenge, what would Jesus do and how could I then apply that to my life? And so she started this with her youth group and then it took off and it became kind of a thing. And now it's still a thing. But I challenge you, well, what would Jesus do? I think the biggest thing that Jesus did and that stands out to me is looked beyond the circumstances. So if you look in Matthew, come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble on heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay, we agree with that. What about this? Do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So if we think right now, part of the pattern of this world is that many of us are like, oh, maybe later. When the pandemic's ended, I'll do this. Once I get to travel, my life will be this way. Once I've seen my Omar, I'll be this way. But once we've traveled and when the pandemic gets to a place, I'm sure, I, don't, I don't think there's going to be quite the starting, the ending date like there was the starting date. I think that that will just, as they say, endemic now, that will become a, a filtering away. So when my life returns to something that I can embrace as the way that it was, these are all based on our circumstances. But if we're not living based on our circumstances, but based on who we're purposed and called to be, then our circumstances don't take center stage. Because right now, the other thing, the other thing that we're seeing through, the other filter, if you like, in the way that we're seeing our life and the way that we're seeing our challenges. And our job then becomes two things. It's about us and it's about others. Hamish spoke on this last week. Two things we need to do. What can we do to step into a closer relationship and be who we're called to be with Jesus? What can we do for our neighbours? If we look at Matthew this is all about Matthew. If we look at Matthew 6, first thing we can do, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear, is li not life more than food, and the body more than clothes. So first thing, if you find yourself in a stage of intense worry, get some support. Do not allow that to be perpetually going around and around and around because it's the tape. It's the tape that's binding you. And it doesn't have to be that way. Next thing. 
Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. This is Matthew 7, 7, 8. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks the door will be opened. That requires action. So if you know you're in a stage of lethargy, if you know you're in a stage of cocooning, if you know for the last however many days that it's just been easier to isolate yourself physically, emotionally, spiritually, actually do something else. Let's try to step out. Ask not only for ourselves. Seeking God in prayer, knowing what it means actually to pray and believing that God is in it. Because that's the challenge. We're not going through the motions. We need to actually step up. It's kind of like in the morning where you put on your wake-up song and jump from left to right and think, how can I be the me that I'm meant to be right now? And this scripture has always fascinated me. It fascinated me because I didn't grow up a Christian. But Matthew 7, 7, 8. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. Now, not growing up a Christian, this was like the number one thing that my mum ever said to me. And I found it fascinating that she was, didn't grow up a Christian. This is not because this was something that she'd read, so it was a nice thing to do. She knew the impact that it would have. And there are a few things that I'm really embracing right now. And one of them is this. It's five words. And it's how I relate to other people. And the words are, if I can... I will. If I can help you, I will. If I can be there for you, I will. If I can speak encouragement into you, I will. If I have something that could bring you freedom, I will. And so in this, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. So what do you need right now? If I gave you a list, like the sushi menu, where you choose all the little bits, and there's so many to choose, it's so hard to fill out that menu. I feel like it takes a lot of time. I just want that one. But if, if on the list I said to you, what do you need right now? What is it that you think, this is not the life that I thought I would have. This is not the me that I thought I would be. So if right now you know that there's something you would need, Maybe it's time with someone else. Maybe it's more hugs. Maybe it is honest conversations where you don't have to pretend that you're fine. Or, and this is the best thing, you don't have to pretend you're fine until you are and then you can be fine. So you tell someone your challenge and then now you feel better and you don't have to wallow in the challenge. Sometimes it's almost harder to tell someone if something's not going well for you because then they keep wanting to go back to it and you're done. So if we then consider doing to others what you would have them to do to you. If we know what we need, let's get that. If we know we need to read the Bible some more with a lens which is not overwhelmed by our circumstances, then you need to pick up this Bible and you need to make time. And it might not be comfortable to begin with. And you might feel frustrated because it's not the answer that you thought you were looking for straight away. But actually, what we get, what you get when you're reading it and you're going through and you're looking at the whole journey of Jesus and you're looking at, at who he is and who he's called us to be, is that sense of hope. That this is a section of time for us. 663 days. 508. But this too shall pass. And at the end of it, I know that I want to be better. And that's always my challenge whenever I, I encounter trauma or tragedy. I say to myself, at the end of this, if I can just keep 
the best parts of who I am and pick up what I'm meant to learn on this journey, then I will. But the only people responsible for this is each of us. Because part of choosing is that we can choose to continue to keep isolating. We can choose to continue to allow this tape. Now when I say keep isolating, I'm not expecting you to go out, it's freedom day, let's go wild on the street. Whatever is safe for you is safe for you. And that's okay. But you have to ask yourself what is safe for me and, and what is the thing that actually I'm doing that I don't need to do. What is safe for me emotionally, right now I'm feeling a bit tender, but I, I also know I need people. What is safe for me spiritually is I'm feeling frustrated because I don't feel the hope, so I know I need to be in a life group where I can have those conversations with other people who actually lift me up. And instead of taking this time to step backwards, every time that you hit a challenge, <laughs> I'm totally sick if I go over the edge, but I know I'm, I'm no, not this time, to keep stepping back, be bold and say, actually, no, I'm not going to be that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to step forward. I met a girl once and she's actually a defining factor in my life. And that one night I met with her and we were out at a social function and her fiancé had uh, passed away 10 years earlier. And every single time that she was at a school function, she would share the pain that she was going through from this event that had happened 10 years earlier. And I felt really sad that for 10 years she hadn't been able to embrace anything else. But I don't want that for any of us or for any of you online. That 10 years from now, is this a, the defining factor? Is those days, 663 days ago, did, is that the course that changed you? that changed who you were, that the purpose of where you were going was here and now it ended up here? Because anyone that's older than like 23 will understand that each choice you make directs your steps and so suddenly you can have veered off after a period of time from where you expected to go. Yeah. So right now I ask you to stand. And as we pray today, I want you to be aware. Are you right now holding any anger at God that's getting in your way? Are you holding this frustration where you think, but God, this isn't fair? If you are, as we start to sing, I want you to hand those over because lots of things are not fair. Right now what we're living through is not great. But once we get past the injustice of what's happening, we know that our hope is beyond ourselves. Our hope is in who he's called us to be in this world. Our hope is to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us, not to shut the Holy Spirit out, not to shut anyone else who wants to speak into our lives out, not to shut the possibilities and the people who are crossing our paths left, right and center that we're refusing to see because our head is down. Because we can sing these songs and they're really lovely. But actually I want you to get a little bit ferocious. I want you to get a little bit in the same way that I would with my babies and anyone that has babies you do. If you need to protect them, you will. If you have to grab hold of them to pull them back because something is going to hurt them, you do. And let's do that for ourselves, for our church, for our nation, for our families. The thing that has caused the pain that you're allowing to be your circumstance, you're allowing to be your filter, just remove that because you are called to much more. So thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I lift up everybody in this space. I lift up everybody at home who is watching. And we stand in hope. 
with faith, with faith in the you that has been throughout the ages, the you that knows what we want to pray before we pray it, the you that directs our steps, the you that heals our wounds, the you that lifts our burdens. And we say no longer will we allow this tape to minimize us, to dictate who we are, to stop us from being the us for the people outside us. This is a song for the valleys, for the harder days. Something to remind me when I've lost my way. And even though it's dark right now, I know morning comes. Because you're the God of the promise, and what you say is done. My soul will hold to all you said. You're my refuge and strength. My yes and amen. Put my trust in your name. Cause you've never failed me yet. You're the breaker. This is a prayer for the desert, where the road seems alone, waiting for the promise that is yet to come, and even in the wilderness, you will lead me home, Jesus, you are with me, you're my only spoken to us in this moment. We thank you for courage. Courage to open our hearts for what you're going to do. Courage for you to open our minds for the next step in our lives. If you're not in, I don't want it. If you said I believe it, when you call me, I will follow. Because you never fed me yet. If you're not in, I don't want it. If you say I believe it, when you call me, I will follow. Right, let's get open. You Come never on. Fail me yet. If you're not in.
And all, all that's required is that continual intentionality. The minute that our circumstances defines us, let's take it away. The minute that the pain and suffering around us is debilitating, Let's peel back and stand for, stand for who we're meant to be, stand for what we're called to do, stand for that word of encouragement when you were nine or 11 or 15, where someone spoke to you where you really felt like God was all over it. And it was who you were called to be in this world and it was how you were called to be. And for some of us, it might be breaking through that tape. That tape literally breaking through it. Because often we don't realize what we've allowed to encase us until we look around and and realize it's encased us. So Father, I pray for everybody here and everybody online that you will give us revelation, that you'll give us clarity, that as we pick up our Bibles and we read with joy and hope that you will bring out specific scriptures that will speak to us in a way that they haven't before or they haven't in the last wee while. Or that we will no longer go through the motions, but we will actually live each of these every days and every nights and every sleeps. If we can, we will. More of you, less of me, your guidance, your refuge, your help, your power. Thank you, Lord. Amen.